The next topic is importance of map. First importance is these maps are easy to handle. That means you can carry it anywhere in your bag. Take example of this map. This is a topographical map. This is just a piece of paper. So what you can do, you can easily fold it and put it in your bag and you can carry it anywhere you want. Next is it provides detailed information. Again taking the example of this map, this is a large scale map and it is showing each and every detail of this particular area. So it is providing the detailed information of a place. Next, third importance is they act as a guide. So how all of you must have been to a park or zoo, right? So all of you must have been uh, seen that map on your path where it has been, the map has been given and with a pointer it has been written, you are here. So why these maps have been provided? So that you don't get lost at a new place. The same thing you can do wherever you visit your tourist destinations also. So they act as a guide in the places where you have never been before. Fourth importance is they help us to find out changes occurred in an area with the passage of time. So for example, take two maps, one which has been prepared in 2001 and one which has been prepared in 2019. And you will see a lot of differences, a lot of changes have occurred with the passage of time in India. Earlier we used to have 29 states and 7 union territories, but now we have 28 states and 9 union territories. So this is an example of how maps show us the changes which have occurred in an area over the time. Now I am going to teach you about scale. But before we start, you should know what is distance. Distance is the length of space between two places or things. And distance are of two types, map distance and ground distance. Distance between any two places on the map is called map distance. And the distance between any two places on the ground is called ground distance. And scale is the ratio of map distance to ground distance. Now, suppose you want to show a road of 4 km, a 4 km long road on a map, on a small piece of paper. Will you be able to fit a 4 km line on a small piece of paper? No. So, what you do, what you will do, you will assume that 1 cm line on the map is representing 1 km long road on the ground. Okay? Or 4 cm long line on the map is representing 4 km long road on the ground. This assumption that we did is known as scale and we have to simplify it for better understanding. So you assume that 1 cm is representing 1 km. So that means and you all know that 1 km is equal to 1 lakh centimeters, right? So 1 cm map distance is equal to 1 lakh centimeter of ground distance. You can also write it in this way in fraction form. Numerator is representing the map distance and denominator is representing the ground distance. Or you can write it in the ratio form 1 is to 1 lakh. That means 1 cm on the map is rep representing 1 lakh centimeters on the ground. Which means 1 cm on the map is representing 1 km on the ground. Your next topic is directions on the map. Directions helps us, helps us in locating a place. And direction has been divided into two types, cardinal directions and intermediate directions. The four major directions are known as cardinal direction. They are north, south, west and east. So if you are standing over here and you are facing towards the north, south will be behind you, east will be on your right hand side and west will be on your left hand side. The other one is intermediate direction. Intermediate direction lies between the cardinal direction. North and east are cardinal direction and there is a direction lying in between these two, it is northeast. So northeast is an intermediate direction. Same is the case with southeast, southwest, northwest. So northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest are intermediate directions. North, south, east, and west are cardinal directions. 
Conventional signs and symbols was your next topic. So these symbols represent different natural and man-made features on a map. Suppose you want to show mountain on a piece of paper on a map. So you cannot exactly represent a mountain because it is very large. So what you will do? You will use certain symbol to represent those mountain ranges. Those symbols are known as conventional signs and symbols. They are standardized and are used throughout the world. That means their meaning remains the same throughout the world. And a key or legend tells us their meaning. So, a key or legend is just like a dictionary to a conventional sign or symbol. Beside these conventional signs and symbols, there are certain colors also which are used on a map and which have some definite meaning. The first one is blue color. Blue color shows water related features. Oceans, lakes, rivers are represented with the help of blue color. Then green color. Green color represents forest, grasslands, trees, etc. Then white color. White color shows rocky or uncultivable land. Uncultivable land that means those land on which agriculture is not possible. Why? Because they are either rocky or they have infertile soil. And the last one is yellow color. Yellow color represents cultivable land. That means agriculture is possible on these type of land. And since agriculture is possible, that means these land is covered with fertile soil.